Can I take it back? I want Nymphia to win this season. <laughs> we could just base- him. The love of the game. <laughs> you but- are my wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would just yeah. do a double elimination. You're both going home. <laughs> I don't want you to win. Go. <laughs> yeah! Who would you play in such game? Oh my God. Who needs breakfast when you have Coming out with butterflies the and then butterflies, you're stomping them to the death. Throwing them. Butterflies. Throw it, and then have to make a butterfly apology. You know that thing when a drag queen puts fabric through a sewing machine and makes a dress? That's, That's what, what you, you did. did. But an, enough of okay? old mother goose <laughs> yeah. Carson putting on his glasses. He's like, the ruffles, I love them. <laughs> and that's all we get. And I'm like, anything yeah. constructive? Where should I be looking? <laughs> At us. Oh, okay. So we're just like, oh, yeah. Have a look. Just want to look at my titty. Yeah. (laughs) Well, look who it is. It's Wendy Williams. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. Of course. (laughs) We have Casey on the pod today. Yes, we're clapping up. So we were like kind of, I don't know, deciding what the hell we were going to film. Yeah. That's always a bit of a struggle sometimes, but we... Took about five hours. <laughs> totally. We wanted to capitalize on the Drag Race finale. So we are recording, today is Wednesday. 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 And the finale is in two days. This will be out Sunday. So we wanted to kind of take advantage of that coming around the bend. And not only talk about 16, but just talk about Drag Race as a whole. Because some of y'all, y'all have been screaming at us for, I don't even know how long, to do a Drag Race episode. And we need Casey here because I don't think there's a bigger Drag Race fan alive. Yeah. Uh, which surprises me, mm. knowing the history of Casey, which we'll, we'll get, get into. <laughs> yeah. We will get into that. Read but... me for Phil. Okay. okay. <laughs> so where do we begin? Where do you want to start? Where should we go? Season well, one? Yeah, <laughs> Vaseline yeah. on the, <laughs> the filter. Vaseline. Once upon a time, a little black girl <laughs> and the Trixie coming out to that, waiting for the intro, and, we, and the Jujube, Jujube going, little black, black girl? girl? <laughs> little black girl? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, that was actually the perfect point almost is I started watching Drag Race like season eight, I want to say, or no, season nine. And um, yeah, I was started. A, yeah, I was a latecomer, season nine. And then uh, oh obviously went back when we met. It was, uh, I don't even know what season was on. I think it had to be um, like 11. All Stars 4. Was... All Stars 4. But the season before that, 11, I think, is what I was watching. I think 11 was after because I okay, watched so 11. 10. And when I had 10 on, Casey, I was telling Kevin, he used to come in and be like, I don't get it. They're just like sitting around and talking all the time. In my defense, every single time I'd catch him, they were in the workroom just sitting around the table. Because it was the beginning of the episode. Begin- and I'd yeah, be like, because where they yeah. do their like Rue cap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He of the loves last, to of slap like, just, Rue on anything. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let's Rue vitalize this. <laughs> like, girl, give it up. <laughs> Let her die. Give up the ghost. So he would always catch the beginning and he would like drag it a little bit. But then once I had All Stars 4 on, like he slowly started started to sit so and then an IV into the veins and then COVID eyes widening <laughs> oh, yeah. pupils yeah, dilated just <laughs> um Manila's spaghetti outfit really was like yes that was all stars four right yes okay yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, because yeah. I got into Drag Race season three. That's wow. yeah. And I remember watching Drag Race and like as horrible as this was, I don't know if it was like internalized homophobia where I was like not comfortable Let's talk with about it. it. <laughs> but I would watch Drag Race. I would come home from school. I would be sitting there and I was just like watching season three. And I vividly remember it was the hairball where mm. Raja came out and it was like the whole thing. And I, I just remember when she walked out, I was like, why am I watching these men do this? Mm. And I was like, what a weird like makeup and hair and like what man wants to do this? Well, there yeah. was also like a taboo-ness to it, right? Because it was on like Logo. Like it was always <gasps> on like- On the gay network. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Cinemax. To, yeah. To even <laughs> oh, it was. That's what it felt like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Literally. But I remember like as a kid, like you would like, click through that channel really quick and be like and that's the thing I was so afraid so every time somebody would like I would hear somebody walking in I would change the channel I would hit last yeah. and it would go to like Spongebob I have a and distinct like, memory it was like, also I have a distinct memory that like scarred me I don't know how old I was I had I don't know maybe like 9 or 10 or whatever and I was flipping channels and I came across it was some show probably like a Maury or a Geraldo God only knows at the time and there was a drag what I think was a drag queen on it but it was like so quick on the TV I can't even, couldn't even tell you imagine if it was RuPaul like and um well Ru to do that yes and I remember from the other room like in the dining room in the house I grew up in my dad saw it and screamed at me and he was like he was like like what's what is that yeah. yada yada like turn that off and I remember being like oh my god like this is so bad And I agree, I had the same feeling, the internalized homophobia of like, I think so many LGBT people, but 
gay men as the three of us can speak to it was this feeling of like oh i'm gay but i'm not that gay because you Mm -hmm. try to set these boundaries for like because of what everyone is yeah. pressed upon you your it was whole a different time it wasn't mainstream no. and i think nowadays i'm so appreciative that it's like everywhere and i try not to take it for granted i mm-hmm. think sometimes we watch some of these runways and we're like oh we've seen it because drag is now on in every country it's like it's advanced so far yes and I, i'm happy that it's on the map and it's becoming more mainstream mm-hmm. and it's sad that people are trying to take that away oh i know but i am now i think a bigger fan than you are <laughs> Psychotic. Like every so. iteration of it. I so many times. He's ruined the All-Star Seven Vanna White Ball for me. He's what I have That was wa- the all winner season, right? Yes. Yeah. I have walked in on him re-watching that episode. Okay. The Vanna White 45 one? times. Do you have a thing for Vanna White? <laughs> <laughs> so do Rosie I O'Donnell. Love, so I love Word Game. Okay. <laughs> <Fine. All right. laughs> Casey, who was your your childhood one crush? One of my childhood crushes growing up was Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. And it was because she hosted all the Nickelodeon shows. Okay. And it was just true allyship. I just didn't know at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I feel like she would just like bully you in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she would just call you an idiot. Yeah, Kevin, it's O'Donnell. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh God, doesn't that? That's Do you want to unpack that real yeah. quick? Kathy Griffith always says that that she said that's how she <laughs> talks. She does that in her stand up where she's like she always calls me and she's like Griffin, it's O'Donnell. I always think of uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh God, it's like it makes me uncomfortable just thinking about her. Yeah, I, I. She scares Rosie me. O'Donnell. And how you could be sexually attracted to her? <laughs> it was, I was no tea if you are. Yeah, but like. More so Casey. <laughs> yeah. I'm concerned. No, it was, it was that thing when you were a little gay boy. It wasn't, I don't think it was yeah, sexual no. attraction. It was almost, it was, it's this weird blender feeling of like, I want to be them because I envy them. They're fun. Th- like, there was just like, ex- well, she would host Nickelodeon shows and like get covered in slime. Like who mm-hmm. wouldn't want to do that? Is that I, what turned you on when she got covered in slime? <laughs> All right. Here's Kevin taking it there. Yeah. Yeah. That's my kink. Yeah. <laughs> Rosie Katie O'Donnell Perry slime. getting blasted in the face. <laughs> Wig off. Getting her fucking brain. <laughs> Got a Liter- fucking lobotomy, <laughs> literally. On the Nickelodeon <laughs> Choice Awards. Oh my stage. god! Uh, oh my god! Yeah. So there's definitely that tepidness in the beginning for me to watch it. Casey ended up loving it more than me. Yeah. Um. And now I, I agree. We watch it all- sometimes. I think I said it last week during the lip sync Lala Perusa. What would LGBT people have without this show? It's our only Thunderdome, really. And you know that's a crazy point that you even say that because I feel like any other show that wants to come on the map at this point, this is such this is the show to watch. This it's is our Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh. So any other show that's coming on the game, they're like, well, we can't be that. So like, we can't even do yeah, exactly. We can't do a competition reality show up with gay people because we're going to be doing the drag race thing too much. So exactly. I don't know. Like RuPaul really was like, and season one was only 2009. Yeah. It felt like oh. it was even way before that. Turning. So it's amazing <sighs> that it was, It. I mean, yes, quite a bit ago, but it, even at that time it was so taboo to do, but this is like amazing. The totally. path that they've paved. Yeah. Yes. Which RuPaul, if you're watching, <laughs> I have an idea for you. I want a bar or like a, okay, you can go to a bowling alley. Know. You can go to like a karaoke thing. I want like a drag experience where you can go, you can like rent out a room. There's like boas, wigs, whatever, some makeup. Maybe there's a drag queen host. Like I want some kind of drag experience where, where you can get in drag. You can get in drag in like a yeah. comfortable and safe space. Obviously there's some dry cleaning issues to work out, but my mother fracker will figure it out. Yeah. But I just, I wish there was some sort of opportunity to explore it in mm-hmm. like a safe way. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, totally. Not on board. Yeah, no, I get it. There's obviously a lot of logistical problems. Yeah, no, but... I could see that. I mean, it sounds like very much like the heterosexual wedding where it's like, let's put on a funky wig and take a photo <laughs> in the photo booth. Like, that's what it's well, giving. Like, let's put on boas and look like idiots. <laughs> Like, I that's what that's good. No. Eat your yeah. leg like a corn on the cob. <laughs> I will never forget my sister. Uh, oh, I, yeah. Um, calls me one day and she had to go to like a bachelorette party and that is not mm. either of my sister's like gigs like the whole you know like I'm getting married like whatever yeah. and she calls me like with like just death in her voice she's like do you have like a wig I can borrow I knew it <laughs> And I go Party like, City Lavender <laughs> shiny girl, wigs. It was my yeah, was and it? I and I was like, what? I was like, why? Yeah. And she's like, oh, I have to go to a bachelorette party and we have to wear wigs. <laughs> like so, like was so, this Katie? Adri. Oh, so I'm and surprised. Katie would I be, know. She oh, would have no part. No, Katie would have said no to being a bride. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have gotten that far. Yeah. <laughs> no, Katie said that all the time. Whenever, like in our early 20s, as Adri and I or whatever our friends, like you would complain about being in weddings because you were broke and yeah. they're so expensive and everybody for their wedding now wants to go to Bangladesh and Nashville. Yeah. 
Nash, yeah, just spend thousands on a bachelorette party. Yeah. We were saying, we're like, oh, this is insane, whatever. And no, Katie goes, she's just like, say no. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah. she would not suffer fools. Like, she, she no. wouldn't have even done it. But I gave a, a, my other sister, it was like my, it was like a blue, it was my, you know what it was? It was the corpse bride wig uh, uh, out. It looked like a Katy Perry. Like, yeah. and, she, and I gave it to her and she also borrowed like my Bay's Weekender bag. So I hand her the bag outside and the wig's in it and she just like opens it up. She's like, that's perfect. And like closes <laughs> it. <laughs> but very much so. No, I agree with you. Where, yeah. yeah, it would be that kind of an experience. Yeah. Well, I also think as yeah. well, you and I underestimate, which I also want to go on record. Hi, guys. If you're new here, welcome back to a brand new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. The, Kevin and I, we hate nothing more than white gay guys critiquing Drag Race because a viral gentleman on the internet perfectly where he was basically saying, he's like, can you do hair? Can you do wigs? You haven't told a joke successfully since I met you. Like, you would be in tears if you tried. Yeah. Could you and I win Drag Race? No. But can mm. we fully style a wig for the runway? Yes. yes. Could we do drag makeup? We have. Could we make an outfit? Yes. We would do well. I could, I, I know would I probably could do the acting challenges. Second. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd make it to a nice, at least maybe. Top six. That's giving me too much credit. I would say eight, maybe. I would, yes. I'm home second. Yeah, like, I, and I, theater, mom, I theater. I, I could sing, I could dance, I could, I could, I could See, do the acting stuff. I don't know, as long as you don't throw that in too And early. I made so many outfits, dresses, whatever. So I, I know how to use sewing machine. I can sew. <laughs> Snatch game, we'll get to it. But yeah, so w- that's why where we're coming from. I think our point of view with something like that is that like, that would very much not only be like a straight experience, but people who can't do what we do makeup and wigs and who want to just throw on a fun wig and have like an experience like that because you and i if we were going to get in drag which we're still going to do one day on this podcast we are going to get in drag like it's going to be like final runway rupaul's drag race level oh like i I won't be able to move and it was so funny because the night i went to the i I went cinched to i went to let's say an event Mm -hmm. where magami was there before she was on drag race and i was wearing my gaga outfit the meat dress the amount of people that thought that was drag i'm like that this is not drag this is me with a uh, a this dress is Halloween. on, no boobs, and this is a wig. Yes. And regular makeup. This isn't drag. Absolutely. That's insulting that you think this is, but thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. But that's where I'm like, no, no, no. Like, that would be cute. That's Halloween, mama. <laughs> yeah, 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 This yeah, is yeah. the Party City shake and go. Yes. But I only wear lace fronts, so don't play with me. Girl. So as we started watching Drag Race together, I feel like you re- really fell in love with it season 12. Yes. Yes. Which ex- also speaks to your favorite queen. If you want to talk about it. Wait, are we... Back? We're back. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We're back. We kind of just go and then come we back. We just go. Just we checking, don't know. Just checking. We just do. We don't know where we are. So I... One of my favorite seasons was season 12, which I know is yeah. not many people's favorite. But for me, it was kind of special because that was one of the first ones I started to watch full through. Mm-hmm. And I just love the cast on that season. Like, Jan is one of my favorites. I got to meet Jan. She was super awesome. Really enjoyed her. Um, Jada Essence Hall is... One of my, she was my favorite queen of all time. We had the same birthday. Like what I love about drag is when people have a full, well version of themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes winners stand out. And so Jada, for me to watch her go through what she went through, like her looks, I can still remember that purple look she oh, did. I know. The look over there, like some of her little pieces. But I just <sighs> love her viewpoint of this div- uh, delusional beauty. Yes. But it's so polished in a way. So I'm so happy that she's going to be doing We're Here. Yeah, And getting more exposure. Like, I just think she's phenomenal. And she's one of my favorites. The other branding. Crystal Method. Ah, I know. Gigi Good. The other branding brilliance of Ball. Jada Essence Hall is the, like, the essence of beauty. Like, I'm the most beautiful person in the world. But the reason it works so well is because it's so wrapped in humbleness. Yes. Of who she is. So it's that uh-huh. dichotomy of like Katya. Her character is this fierce Russian yes. streetwalker. But then in real life, she's like a giggly, crazy, sweet. Like, yeah. so it, it makes There's it a genuineness. Funnier. It makes yeah. it work better. It comes from a, a place of heart. And that's why. And it was a very good. Yeah, I feel like you got a little bit of everything on season 12. You got Jada was her brand. Gigi was that girl. The, the twin fashion. who Paul always wants oh, to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And oh, then the yeah. fashion. And then uh you got Crystal, which was the it was art quirky crazy. and fun. Yeah. And and even that they had to pivot for COVID, obviously, but what they were able to accomplish. Yes. Like imagine being those interns and producers being like, Well, RuPaul's being like, Mama, we need this to work. I know. They're out there taping their living room out with the yeah. Zoom camera, figuring everything out. Girl. Like, that <laughs> was something I got to say. What was it like winning drag and, and then shutting your laptop? laptop. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, but like, and I even thought about that whole experience when they did that. I mean, I gotta say, unpopular, controversial opinion. Mm -hmm. I think Gigi's last performance when she did Take On Me, did that yes. whole song with that full-fledged thing in her home. <sighs> yes. Was way better than rolling around on the couch what Jada did. I agree. T, I agree. Mama, don't come at me. <laughs> Gigi had a production. I know. Yeah, that was very cool. Jada was rolling around on the living room floor. It's always so funny, too, because it's like the standpoint of, yeah, at the time, I don't know who I was like maybe rooting for or whatever. I would have been happy with either one of them. But it's yeah. so funny how some queens that don't win Drag Race end up, it ends up being 90 times better for them than it's if the they did. It's the best thing that could ever happen. Because it's almost mm. like from a standpoint, and maybe that's, and I don't know, maybe I'm giving Rue too much credit, but like, I almost feel like that's what Rue realizes in the sense of like, Jada has become such an epitome of the drag race franchise after winning where I can't picture Gigi having done that. I can't picture Gigi having eat, sleep and breathe, breathing drag race, drag no. race, being on We're Here, like that kind yeah. of a, like I represent drag race 24 hours she a day. She doesn't have a... She has a commanding personality, but in different ways than Jada. Where that's where I feel like Gigi shined by not winning and then becoming an actual model, 100%. like walking like in. Oh, yes, Bimini. Bimini. You didn't Bimini have to Bamboo win, Lash. but now your your career. Girl, not watching rocking. UK. They don't need it. Drag Race if they paid him a million dollars yeah. because they're getting paid a million dollars to walk in like Jean Paul Gaultier yeah. shows. Yeah. So that's where I feel like, in hindsight, it was such a great decision. And Agreed. who knows what was cause and effect? Maybe that's be. Who knows if they if the roles were reversed? Maybe they both would have went into mm. this whatever, but. Jada just oozes, no pun intended, is the essence of Drag Race to 100%. me. Like, yeah. especially watching her on All Winners. And so then, I also love an underdog. And so another favorite for me is Jinx Monsoon because, mm. and as is everyone's, but like season five, when you yes. watch it, oh God. I remember like, brutal. you obviously knew what was going to happen. I'm watching it back and I have no idea who anybody is, what's going to happen. And there were certain names I remember hearing like Alaska and a couple others, but I was like, okay, yeah. what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And when she won, I remember just this feeling of like, wow. And then to watch her come back for all stars, all winners, just like literally Different. slam like dunk home run day. Oh my God. out of the yeah. park. Just bo this is what they're born to be. Cause doing. we went back during COVID and we watched all the seasons. Watched every yeah. Oh my God. Like, yeah. cause we had nothing to do. And that's what we watched I turned during lockdown was, like, was we like drag race watch oh. this and you were like oh my god it was so fun to watch him watch it like That's it was my, like my mom and i during lockdown she was like i kind of want to watch all of them because we started her i think on 10 is yeah. when she first started watching and then she was like i want to see what happened before this yeah and she's like i want to see all stars i want to watch all of it and she yes. was incredible and she was yeah. so like full into it she was like this is like amazing to see even how it's like filmed yes the production level of everything like I remember vividly watching the season talent, four from yeah. like the jump because that's when I was like, no, I'm comfortable watching this show. I don't care. Mm -hmm. And just even going back to watch it, I'm like, digging through the dumpster on the first episode <laughs> for the RuPocalypse, girl. This I is know. disgusting. I know. Yeah. Don't. But they used to do like physical, like Ugh. in the du full yes, dumpster yes. diving. Yes. And like, do you people remember, was it All Stars 1? Yeah, going up to people in the street and like asking them to Trying do to sell, things like, to them. Coupons. They're like, can you pick this egg out of my pants? And I'm <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. what is this show? They're yeah. going to get assaulted. Yes. Yeah. Like not only is it a drag queen, but you're asking strangers yes. that you don't know their intentions to do physical things to totally. you. Yes. And it's, I think no. sometimes it's gotten a little bit lather, rinse, repeat. So mm -hmm. I've Easily. become appreciative of certain special challenges. Like the first year they did, I think it was season 14 when they did um, Daytona Wins. Like mm -hmm. here's an acting challenge, but here's this spin yeah. on it. And we're going to make it like just different. And I remember really enjoying that. Yeah. Where sometimes now, like I don't need another RDR live. Like it's the <sighs> same thing. Yeah, yeah they're rinse repeat. I have a whole conspiracy theory about. Yeah, and every time I hear RDR live, I think of like Drag Race hard. live. Oh, and I'm like, no, this is like SNL, but it's not because I know the writing isn't funny. <laughs> it's not, not funny. funny. Well, yeah, SNL is barely funny, but yes, but I know it's what like you mean. it's not. Yeah. Tina Fey isn't in the writers' room for this show. <laughs> totally, this isn't Tony funny. Fey is not in the writers' room. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, God, I Tony can't. Fey. Yeah. Oh my. God, yeah. it's horrible. And so we watch all of them during COVID and then fast forward to 16, current season. 
And uh, so Casey and I do a um, we're in a drag fantasy a drag league. race fantasy league. It is like so fun. This year was really exciting. We all got to pick our queens. Last year they did it like bingo style. We had to pick numbers. <gasps> yeah, we had like a random draw, which kind of helped you. Because I did well last year because I had Sasha Colby. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's like you're going into it like. I would rather pick my players like fantasy football. Absolutely. Because how do you like what now? I'm stuck and I lose money because yeah. it was a random drawing. No, totally. Like if I know the game. Oh, and Mama, we know the game. <laughs> oh, we know it so well. I'm yeah. sitting there studying. I'm like watching the Meet the Queens, paying attention to all the things. We had to pick three queens, and so I picked Q, Nymphia, and Safira. My number. I was like, Safira is going to win. Yes, and I picked uh, Safira, Q, and Plain Jane. And we had talked about we were like. Should we split it up? And it's funny because I think this opens up a conversation about the ideology of Drag Race because I was even saying when I was picking my queens, I definitely want Safira and Q as well. I think they're going to make it all the way, which I kind of like that was a gag that Q was actually eliminated that it's a top three. I was like waiting for him to be like, just kidding. Well, yeah. the dramatic pause was almost like mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. almost like a little like, oh, yeah. I'm, we're going to do a yeah. top four. But yeah. it was like, but thank you for your third. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. But it's that thing you say, the woman. Think you think you shut the door or the crazy woman. Bye, driver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye, bye driver. driver. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. But like it was, it was. I, I felt kind of bad for her. It was yeah. gaggy. Cause like, how are they? Is this just going to be like a season eight where they're going to do like an original song? Like, I, I, I well, mean, I hope because we'll talk. I don't, about, girl. Well, okay, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so I knew Safira and Q were going to make it mm-hmm. this far. He had Nymphia. I was like, okay, you have Nymphia covered. Let's try to spread the field a little more. I. Ended up going with Plain Jane, but I was this close to picking Dawn or Plasma based on the entrance meet looks the and, and what that. we had to meet the queens, what we had from there, because we know the the formula. The exactly not who deserves and doesn't deserve to get where they get, but the puppet mastery, the production of the show. And I said to him, I was like, Dawn, especially with that makeup, I was like, is never gonna get as far as the rest of these queens because she's going to get the lather, rinse, repeat, Michelle Visage critique of your makeup's the same every week. I want to see something different. It's the doing it to Rock'em Soccer, a Trixie, all of them. It's yeah, fine your that Safira's, Q's, yeah. Plain Jane's, all of their makeup's the same. But if you choose to have a makeup style that isn't just woman, it needs to be changed at some point, unlike everyone else. And show us <laughs> what everyone else is doing to show versatility. Can which, you dial back what you're doing and do more basic? Also in that regard, because I agree, don't change for anybody on Drag Race because it and just And then my other thing to. quick, in case this is yeah. gonna, what you're adding on, was not plasma because the theater queen Never, never makes wins. it to the Rue top five. hates the theater queen. No, and all the Drag Race like Wikipedia pages have proven there has never been a theater queen in the no, top four. No. There's also never been anyone who's won the Rusical in the U.S. has never won the show. I thought Plasma was going to like, and people were saying she was going to like break that curse. Yeah. And I, it speaks volumes of like, I was gagged to say Plasma went home with two wins. Yeah. And at that point... It was only like her and two other people had wins. I think it was Safira and Plain Jane yeah, were the only shocking. ones with wins. They all had like two and he sent her home. And so I was just like, I, I knew yeah. theater queens didn't win. And I knew Plain Jane was more in the l- realm of what the show, because she was given giving villain from the start. So I was like, she's going to be the Roxy Andrews to a, someone's Jinx Monsoon. They're going to want her in the finale. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick because they Plain need Jane. the they need the villain. They need the candy muse. They exactly. need the, yeah. the protagonist and like everything. Yes. So they they have the storyline already picked out. They just need to find the chess pieces that fit totally. in Absolutely. to get to the end. Yeah. So sorry you were saying uh, not to change um, for anyone. Like oh, and uh, like someone like Dawn, I agree that like nobody should change, but I do think there's something to it. Like if they if you know they're going to say it to you for the share runway. Go into it. Do this beautiful look. Switch up your makeup for an episode. Yes. They will eat you up. Yes. Girl, And you'll, yes. you'll win the challenge. Give them something different. Give yes. them something different because you'll win. And then you'll be <laughs> basically in the top four. If you yes. know you're yeah. going to make it far, play the game that you know you're going into. Don't yeah. try and go in there and try and beat the system because you know who the judges are. Yes. You know what they're going to say. You know the the archetypes essentially that Rue is going to be like meh yes and be like okay unless you look like you know Violet Chachki or Aquaria you're not gonna <laughs> get yes. praised by her but like someone like Michelle that does critique the same makeup every time yes switch it up for two episodes I know 16 yeah. and you'll so go far. I feel like with Dawn I wish she would have went the way of Gottmik of like Gottmik right could have become yes. very lather and repeat same thing but listen to the critiques changed everything 
And I think that's why they were able to cement themselves as far as they were. Absolutely. Whereas Dawn, every single time, it was like a long sleeve. <sighs> And this yeah, looking like, it was out. too like club kid. Absolutely. Where it yes. gets, they do love that once in a while, but like even I thought her chain look <gasps> beautiful. Absolutely my favorite. I agree. She looked really beautiful. And unfortunately, it's always, I feel like when they break the mold a little <laughs> bit is when they go home. <laughs> totally. Well, and uh, my problem with Dawn was always, it was just the same. Like I just knew it was going to be like the same. Like give me some body. I get that you're smaller, but. Yes. Give a little bit of depth mm, or whatever. Yes. So for Plain, my problem with Plain is that I feel like she is just trying to win the game. Yes. Like, I don't think who we're seeing is who she really is. Mm -hmm. I have a whole conspiracy theory about, we looked this up, so the RDR challenge, mm. Plain played a very similar version of what Jimbo played on All-Stars 8. And yes. when we looked it up, they were like in quarantine for the show right around the same time that that dropped. And I think that Plain was like, this worked for her. I'm going to try it if I have this opportunity. Yes, we looked up because I said, Plain did the burger fingers thing, which was not my favorite. I was like, oh, like, okay, it's giving Jimbo, like with the big breast plate. And, yeah. and the bologna clown. Yeah, and like exactly. hot, like, dumb stuff. And then cut to yeah. RDR Live, it was literally a carbon copy like the same skits from smudge lipstick yeah they were gardeners Slut, yeah. or that different profession but it was the exact <laughs> the same, same format thing. playing yeah. the same characters jimbo looked exactly the same i looked up when that jimbo episode uh was on tv it was five days before the girl season 16 girls had to go in lockdown so plain could have seen yeah jimbo mm -hmm. do that character and yeah. if she didn't which I don't know, I would have to have a lie detector test taken, yeah. was shockingly similar. And But I agree with you. I think plain feels very Velasca Toxy, where it was very, they were playing to win, mm -hmm. not playing to show any vulnerability or mm -hmm. which like, started to crack at the end exactly right? and to see that literally the challenges yes. of like oh i'm all about like if you want to be like hot and mean cool <laughs> but like i don't know give me purpose as to why totally. like bianca yes. yes like give me that of like that confidence of like i helped unpack but like now you're just being a bitch and like coming because at first it was like this weird coming at people i forget oh no she was coming at um a mandatory a meeting a mandatory meeting great drag name and she was just so <gasps> yes. like awful to her like literally yeah and you could tell too it wasn't produced because amanda was getting like actually and she's like i don't know what your problem is but yeah. like i wasn't even speaking it was to intense you. when she whipped so, her head around she was like why are you such a yeah yeah oh that's where i feel like the producers were foaming at the mouth because i think plane was just this way they were probably telling her ham it up and then amanda was just not having it where i do think in the past i do think that they definitely like we've heard from the stories from drag race girls that they definitely have been like oh ask her about her dead dad and see what happens <laughs> and they're yeah. like i'm doing my makeup i don't think it's the time yeah and they're like yeah no go ahead ask her i don't yeah. know but i feel like anytime somebody like reveals something i'm gonna say give it it's either that episode or the oh. next episode gone of Alyssa. Course. Alyssa Edwards on the anniversary of her mother's, mother's death, death with the sister there doing the makeover challenge eliminated. It's like when people are down, you just want to. That is the best Trixie quote. She's yeah. like, that's a day on the job at Drag Race. Send yeah. your best friend home on the anniversary of her mother's death. <laughs> like With her sister, with his sister there. I know. As a whole, we were kind of saying, uh, okay season. Eh. It was a little, but I yeah. agree. I think it was the writing, which you said something brilliant. So apparently was looking into the blogs on Reddit, trying to figure out what was going on this season. And apparently they're saying the writer's strike played into why there was more design challenges, less acting challenges, because they didn't have yeah. enough writers to maybe produce what they need to produce. And yeah. so it makes sense. I mean, we had a doll challenge where they make over a doll. Yeah. The, even the book challenge at the end, they yes. had to write something, which I'm like, what did you write? Yeah. Like, where's the submission? Show me the Google Doc. Share me on it. Yeah. Because, yeah, because yeah. even the acting challenge that they did have where it was like drag queens in space again, because we love to <sighs> go in I mean. space with this show. <laughs> it was so poorly written where I'm like looking at it. And I'm like, this isn't I nobody know. should yeah. win. Or, I know. And it's the script. I will say what I appreciate about this season, though, is it does feel like going into the finale. It's kind of like <gasps> neck and neck. And neck. I agree. Like, I don't agree. I see. I hate when you go into a finale and it's so evident 
that someone's gonna like win. Like Sasha I, Colby was gonna win. We yeah. knew that was gonna happen. Well, this I one, thought Anitra could pull it out. I thought so too. If anyone could have, it was Anitra. Okay, so I always say to him, because Snatch Game, before <sighs> Jimbo did it, and you're my witness, before Jimbo ever did it, I used to say, because I would always think, what would I do during Snatch Game? Before Jimbo, I always said, why has no one done, done Joan Rivers? Like, she yeah. is the, uh, an ideal whatever. And now I always say I would do Samantha Jones from Sex and the City, like mm-hmm. Kim Cattrall. Because I'm like, you have to pick a character that is has such an over-the-top personality. But also, even if you don't know every single quote, which you should have a list of them there, of iconic things they say, you have certain things that you could answer back to anything. Like, even- To if anyone, you're, anything. Yes, like, yeah. even with Samantha Jones, and I, I when I was, the, when I thought of, oh my God, that's who I would do now that I couldn't do Drone Rivers, I always said, I was like, you know, Rue's test in the workroom when he comes in and he says, who are you doing? They're doing it. What'd you have for dinner tonight? <laughs> yeah, like, Literally, where he's like, yeah, he's like, so, so, so Samantha Jones, what did you have for breakfast? or whatever like that's always his test and I always said I was like you need to pick a character that yeah. right off the top of my head you can just go like who needs breakfast when you have dick like <laughs> yeah that there's Rue those would, quips that yes. would send him to outer space yes totally. where yeah. there's those quip like to Samantha Jones you could answer anything with a <laughs> pun if you were on Drag Race who would you play in Snatch Game oh my god um you were saying Samantha I would Jones? do Samantha Jones <gasps> I because oh there's I, nothing you couldn't respond to Samantha so I think I would do in this moment this is my answer yeah my answer would be, I feel like I would try to do Rachel Ray. Oh, She's wow. got some defining characteristics. There's, yes. I feel like enough I could play with and oh. do it in a way where it's not, it would be tasteful. Yeah. Oh, I would like be, if I was Rachel Ray, I'd be like whipping out cigarettes. Yeah. Like, But I would be, it would almost be Paris Hilton got Mick where it was like yes. the on camera, I miss 30 yeah, let minute me know meals. When you're ready. And then when the yeah. red light goes off, Where's my cigarette? Yeah. Where's my whatever? Because that's Rachel Ray. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think I would have to do, because you can't do trademark characters. Mm. So I would do John Travolta as <laughs> an term lad. Yes. I would just be John Travolta. And yes. then just in that would show up as Edna. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How has that not happened? Girl, that's I would genius. do it in a heartbeat. I would that literally just be, yeah, because you can't, because we have a friend that auditioned for yes. Drag Race and he was telling me, he's like, yeah, if you look, you can't do trademarks. So if you want to do Mrs. Doubtfire, you have to do Robin Williams. Robin Williams. You can't do yes. like yes. the trademarked character. So I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I would do Edna yeah. Turnblad. I think part of the problem is people are, they color out of the lines a little too much of like a Nietzsche on her season was like Georgina Ramsey. Like they've just started yeah. to get a little bit too, because I'm all about like, do your own thing, have fun with it. But I'm also like, part of the point of, why Snatch Game originally started was to do impersonate celebrity celebrities. Isn't that the point of the game? The like John Lynch Blonde did like uh, yeah, like Saint a leprechaun Patrick, on a Wednesday. Patricia. Like Patricia. Yeah, yeah. Like it just yeah. I wish they would. It's tired. Really, it, I think it bit. should go back. It has to be a celebrity because that, that's very. You want to talk about scale. Drag race to do smaller. Absolutely. Oh God, I hate when there's like nine of them doing snatch games. Season like shit show. fifteen. Yeah, yeah. And um, or for me, 14, a tight or, seven. Oh, yeah, weed out exactly. the other ones. Get rid <laughs> of the. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yes, because you talk about drag race. You know, in its inception, was supposed to be a gauntlet of things. Which honestly, back in the OG days, you brought up dumpster diving and handing out flyers. That's what you did. Like, that's what dr- lo- drag queens, like local yeah. dra- drag queens in the wild. Hustled. It, yeah. it was supposed to be the show was supposed to put you through challenges that was expected of a drag queen. Yeah. If any of those challenges still even exists, <laughs> is Snatch Game. Yeah. It's celebrity impersonation. Totally. So it's like, that's what I mean. It is getting a little too wild with like, I get to play, yeah, my grandmother's sister's aunt who never Twice existed. Twice removed. Yeah, yeah, it's like too... My best friend's cousin, squirrel friend's wedding date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the rest of the challenges. Mirage's lip sync. Oh, mud on. That was... When she went home, that was like... That was I hard know. to And the, it was Cher, right? Yeah. Yes, Dark home. Lady. And yeah. it was like, she was started to do it. And it was, I was like, oh my God, she is going to like take no prisoners with the leg kick and the whatever. And then when you knew she didn't know the lyrics... I literally was like, we were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I felt like and watching it was like, a plane crash. And watching her cry on the runway, like, at, see, it, it was like hard to watch. I just, I've always tried to put myself in the position of these queens when you think you're like, I know this song by heart. <gasps> yeah. Even girl. if you're listening to it five minutes before and it's like, yeah, if you don't know the song, but you're listening to it. And just like the pressure of like, I'm about to go out here and I need to impress RuPaul, Michelle, Carson, and 50% the hilarious of that I Ross Matthews. <laughs> the Shilarious you know Ross that? Matthews. <laughs> you know that thing? When a drag queen moves their lips yeah. and a song's playing, that's what you did. 
<laughs> I can't. I'm gonna stand. hit you. I can't and take I credit for that. Bad. That was Bob. Uh, I think Bob pointed that out on uh, something, maybe sibling rivalry, where he said he was like Ross's critiques of just he says nothing. Where it's whatever it is, if it's a ball challenge, and he's like, you know that thing when a drag queen puts fabric through a sewing machine and makes a dress. That's, That's what, what you, you did. did. But en- enough of okay? old mother goose <laughs> yeah. person putting on his glasses. He's like, the ruffles, I love them. <laughs> and that's all we get. And I'm like, anything yeah. constructive? Yes. And yes. he's like, I just love how it's all I know. mishmash. I know. And I'm like, no, that's yeah. the we issue We said it this it. season. Girl, I'm sorry. I love Ross, but he's got the hookup with Drew Barrymore now. Carson, he go back and save Queer <gasps> Eye. I want T.S. Madison T.S. Madison. the only full-time. other judge. Did you see the April Fool's joke that got posted mm-hmm. of like... um the judges panel is getting reworked. So it's Michelle and Rue obviously staying. And then Ross was being replaced with T.S. Madison. And I, it was a April Fool's joke. And I was like, oh my, and I was reading it because it sounded so real. I almost commented, thank God. And everyone's like, oh God, I forgot what day it was. And I'm like, ah, yes, me too. <laughs> yes. yes, I as well. <laughs> yeah. And it's, first of all, can't do drag. We've seen me do Johnny's makeup. <gasps> Click it was the link great. here <laughs> yeah, to yeah. watch it. I want, to watch judges critique. It's gotten so grandiose. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to dial it back a little bit because it's like almost pricing people out, which is why I always love design challenges, which I know we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. But I love design challenges because I'm like, I want to see some talent. I want to see some skill. Because you can have anybody design something for you and wear it. Absolutely. But it's about how you sell it and all these other pieces that... Well, because we say that. We're like, is it RuPaul's Drag Race or RuPaul's money. who has the most money yeah. race? And that's really what's happened now where it's like... We said it in the beginning where it was like, I felt like there was queens who got eliminated in the beginning of this season like Hershey and Mirage and Tsunami were three in particular that I felt, were they going to win? Maybe not. But would they have had a little bit of a jinx monsoon glow up throughout the season. And yeah. would it have been so great to see them like a, a Mirage and a Tsunami and a Hershey that maybe were a little more shy than the top four we picked come out of their shell. And it's it, it, that that was the fun part of Drag Race back in the day was seeing these people grow into yes. coming out of there and having their rev- revelation moment. And I said to him, I was like, you know, they they almost they don't even care about that now because the judging is strictly based on how much money you spend on the runway or whatever foolery the judges always comes down to, which kills me. And the first yep. four or so you sent home were the ones that could have been a Jinx Monsoon growth and didn't. And I said to him, I'm like, why that's so annoying to me now is that if Jinx Monsoon season five was on Drag Race today, would have been eliminated second. Yeah. Because it's a different show. And that's what kills me. It's like, we're never going to get another Jinx Monsoon because that's not what the show even looks for anymore. Yeah, It wants the Safiras and the Plain Janes and the... I'll give Q more credit because she and uh, Nymphia. Nymphia because they make everything. But your plain Janes and your Safiras that had the money to bring an entire share replica dress that was like walking in with what? a giant pumpkin. Like, that's How? what I mean. Like the money, the girls yeah. with the money. It's like and and not to discredit what plain yeah. Jane and Safira did. Incredible. Other yeah. than that, but it makes you realize we're never going to get another Jinx Monsoon. Yeah. Adam no, because that, race. yeah, because I feel like the star quality of the queens, like when Gia Gunn said it to Trixie, like the dolls are the dolls. It's <sighs> so true because I feel yes. like after season, I'm going to even say season six, not even season seven. I feel like those first six seasons were like my winners. So I yes. was like, they deserve, they worked hard. They did it. They really pulled through the entire season. But then yes. other than that, I was like. Yes. I don't know. I'm just kind of like, then I feel like with, starting with Violet, with like Miss Fame and all of them, they were, they, that's where the money started to come in. These people came in polished. Totally. And then there was no real growth. No. And that's where it kind of gets annoying. And the inevitable, like if you lip sync six times. I know. Do I need to say the name? <laughs> I know. <laughs> that you're lip syncing six times. There's not going to be a redemption arc. You're not going to win know, the girl. season. So why are we keeping them? I, I would know. just do a double elimination. You're both going home. <laughs> I don't want you to win. Go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. You, I would be relentless yeah, as RuPaul. I and know. I think that's where it would like, I would watch the show more if RuPaul was like, you both were disgusting. <laughs> I need you to go. I know. Like Tyra Banks it and be like, actually, <sighs> I know. Trash. I know. Walking like that girl. I actually just don't want to be here. I actually anymore. don't want to be her. Yeah. I can't handle the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a yeah. I can't do it. And just turns around. Yeah. yeah. 
I and you know what it is? It's like exactly. It's the way yeah. the judging falls sometimes. That I was rant and rave to you, and it did, nothing aggravates me more than when a challenge happens. Let's say there's a bottom three who did really bad in the challenge. They all did just as bad. Then they have a runway, and one of those three people's runway eats the other twos for breakfast doesn't factor into the judging at all. No. So then why are we doing a runway? Yeah. Like right. there's always some, there's one massive element or, every episode that I'm like, okay, apparently this yeah, doesn't we're factor just gonna into judging. That. Yeah. Like, or sometimes when they're in groups and then judge individually. <gasps> like girl, why are we, When they cherry pick when yeah, they're judging as groups and individuals. It's just, it's Cause then you, you can smell it. And I'm like, well then she's going to be in the bottom. They're going to be safe. And then and that's it. The finale. Let's get into it. I hate a lip sync smack down for the crown. I hate it. I think it's, as much as they want to say it's random, it's never random. Because I think they have a predetermined, never. like, the two that they want first to knock out one of them because they don't really care. Yes. The person that's going to win is always in the second lip sync. That's always going to be like, oh, they're going to go away for right now. <laughs> so the first two, neither one of them is going to win. You're right. So it's always the second person that they're saving their energy in the back. Interesting. Yeah. We need some fact checking. I know. So I don't know if I've ever, yeah, Yeah, so if you that. think about, like, specifically season nine. Sasha Velour set the standard too high for RuPaul's Drag Race production, thinking that lip sync smackdowns for the crowns were going to A, yield that result, or B, unearth a hidden talent we had never seen a queen who never had to lip sync do, yeah. but drum roll. Not everyone is, nor has anyone been a Sasha Velour since Sasha Velour. So cut the shit well, with the lip sync smack. Asia O'Hara coming out with butterflies, the and then butterflies, you're stomping them to the death. Throwing them, butterflies. Throw, and then had to make a butterfly apology. <laughs> I'll never forget Cameron Michaels. The, the meme of Cameron after the lip sync was standing there like this, like breathing really heavy, because Cameron was an amazing lip syncer. Yeah. And she's standing there, and it's her side-eyeing like this, like looking down at the yeah. ground. And the words over it were... When you realize you just put pounded <laughs> butterflies to death during this oh because God. she didn't know what was happening yeah. and she yeah. didn't know she was flinging live did butterflies you, on the Did stage. you ever see the meme? It was like a police room where they were like debriefing <laughs> them and it was all butterflies and they were like, this person is armed and dangerous. And I was, oh I was, and God. then she had to make a whole apology because imagine they filmed those finales. Yeah. You know what's going to happen. So it's like, I think it's about a month or so yeah. that you film the finale yeah. between then and getting aired <laughs> yeah. of like, you know you f***ed up and living with that guilt. And <laughs> yeah. then you have to like, Wait you have the, the notes app to apology you. to be like, send it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I just, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, but that's where it's like they try and one up Sasha. And I'm just like. Because that's the thing. There's pros and cons to a lip sync Smackdown. The pro is for someone like a Nymphia who's never lips, we've never, seen, never seen her lip sync. <gasps> is she yeah. is she going to pull out something like that? That's great. The con, someone wins who's just a better lip syncer when they have no wins and the other three in the finale have four wins each. What are we doing? Like It's like having the Olympics, having the top three and then making them rocks, paper, scissors for the gold. That's what it feels like. It's yeah. not, it, it's that much weight should not be on this SmackDown that you're right is manipulated. We know exactly who the wheels landed on, whatever. Yeah. And then, but for me, I always felt with season eight, I loved the songs that got written for them. You needed to have established a strong enough personal brand that was reflected in your song. Like, even think about season eight was Legs, Fat Feminasian, Kim Chi. That's, I can't, Fat Feminasian. It feels like a branding challenge. And it's also, what, you all deserve to be here. You all don't have yeah. to claw each other That's out. That's what I'm yes. saying. You've already made it to yeah. the finale. A, what is your brand? B, it gives you an entire chance to perform. If it was the season nine finale and they had it season eight style, Sasha yeah. Valore still would have did the rose petals. I also like when they do the personalized songs because I feel like it's a good like send off to give them something, right? Like they've invested all this time, whatever. So even if you don't win, you have this opportunity of like, here's something you can take on the road now. Season 14, talk about branding. Lady Camden, I fell down. I, <gasps> like that to me was iconic. I still listen to that song. Yes. Because it was like, here's this moment. She fell down in her challenge, but what a beautiful arc. Like, I know. So clever. And now she does the whole thing with the mustache. Like yes, she's totally. She has a brand and something to walk away with. So yes. I appreciate that. 
versus yeah season uh 15 goddess by sasha colby like yes. here's another opportunity yeah. for this person to have something yes which so I, if i hear that song one more time i'm gonna claw my eyes out <laughs> yes because i can't hear g o d d e s s like i can't i can't so but good, i do think like Ugh. even because this episode just to prove to you it is wednesday the 16th 17th i do think it's going to be safira okay to and, win is it- to win nymphia is not going to go forward and it's going to be between, I think Nymphia, they're all going to do a song. I think Nymphia will be like, so sorry, my dear, but you are safe. And it's going to be, it's going to be Safira and plain Jane for the crown. And Safira is going to take but, it. Okay. So you, think I couldn't Saf- disagree more. You think Safira is going to win. Who do you want to win? Out of all of them, yeah. mm-hmm. Safira or Nymphia. Okay. At okay. this point. Because I do think, I mean, listen, plain Jane's looks have been consistent she's yeah. been very consistent she's won four challenges so is safira i think she yeah which is that. such a close that's why i think yes. people like i'm so invested yeah. in this because say what you want about the season like these are three people like nymphia's never been never, in the bottom never been <sighs> in the bottom never lip sync she was close but she never did no. it. exactly and then you've got two people with four wins that's like not happened no and, but but look at uh oh my god what was it season 13 with that was candy muse right yeah mm-hmm. so it was she was the runner up. Yes. The, the villain of the season. So plain Jane of the season. Yes. Going up against somebody that we're like, okay, well, she's going to, she better win because exactly. she's not yeah. the villain. Who do you think's going to win and who you want to win? I think Nymphia is going to win and I want Nymphia to win because I think A, you have to realize in the past couple of years, the RuPaul's Drag Race production, they are literally scared of the RuPaul's Drag Race fans because they are psychotic, like what they do on social media. And I would say for the past, what, six years, when they post the, are you team Mm -hmm. Nymphia? Are you team this? The one with the most likes, especially if it's a massive difference, wins because they know they'll have the studio set on fire. So Nymphia, which I'm kind of shocked Has that people realize so it. Oh, oh, by a lot. By landslide, triple. Mama. No. By triple. Like, and then to add insult to injury, what's gaggy is, yes, the, uh, Safira and wow. Plain have four wins. Nymphia only has two, but she's never been in the bottom. So that almost takes away a win for them more. And I want to, I got to say, which I forgot to touch on, there was multiple times I felt Nymphia should have won, like the makeover challenge, Nymphia's, which we'll actually get yeah. to it in our looks, but Nymphia's makeover challenge compared to Plain Jane's carbon copy, same exact outfit, but brick house makeup on that poor man. Nymphia's guy looked, if you didn't tell like my mom he wasn't a contestant on Drag Race, she would have been like, he's as beautiful yeah. as everyone up there. Nymphia did the best, she in my opinion, which I think is of making him look like a drag And queen. she didn't switch the colors, so that's what she got red for. Which, which what the fuck? Why like, don't you wear lavender and he wear yellow? That's and I'm it. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? And my other thing was looking through of our looks. We picked all of our favorite looks. We'll get into it right after this. Um, <laughs> Nymphia. Nymphia. <Yeah. laughs> Nymphia was the only one that had moments that, like, I think... Mm. Took my breath away. Took my breath away and weren't yeah. just... Which we'll touch on. Uh, let's just say recreations of other people's ideas. It was original, yeah. unbelievable things. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get... Now, this is a stretch. Because I do think out of all three, I want so I want Safira and Nymphia to be in the top. Do you think we're going to get Ooh. a double crowning? No. This season? Like you were saying, who's going to get knocked out of the three? I think Plain, plain Jane yeah. is going to get knocked out. I could see it going Plain or Nymphia because I could see Nymphia being like, so sorry, because we'll see you on All Stars kind of thing. But I feel like Plain, plain Jane? Plain you yeah. think they don't want Plain Jane back on TV tomorrow? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Plain isn't winning the season. No. She's an All Stars type. And I think production wise, there's more tension in a final two of Safira and Nymphia because they're both nice. They're both amazing. Oh, so okay. that is that is truly anyone could yeah. win. Because if you think about it, anyone in the top two with Plain Jane is Plain Jane is the Candy Muse. The other the and Simone she's not, is gonna she's win. She's gonna be the runner-up. Exactly. So the reason I don't think there's gonna be a double crowning is because I feel like if we ever got a double crowning, it would be with four queens down to two. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like if you do three queens. And then whittle it down to two and pick like that just feels like anticlimactic. Where at least really brutal for the third. Yeah, yeah, just being like the Courtney act. Yeah, when they filmed, they filmed in season six. Bianca tells they filmed all three of them winning like they do. So there's no spoilers. And then they filmed a Bianca adore adore tie and said, 
thanks everyone. And Courtney was like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm not yeah. winning. Like, yeah. yeah. No, and literally not even yeah. saying like a Bianca and Courtney and like you don't film it every, every which yeah. way. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't even so think about that. That's my like, thought there. But <laughs> I, so I'll be happy whoever wins. Cause I, I do think there are three very talented people. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. be the least happy. I think if Plain wins just because I think she has some growing to do uh, yeah. and some identity development to do there. But I want, Nymphia to win and I think Nymphia will win and the reason I think Nymphia will win is my hope is coming off that last win she had she'll have had some time to really sink in the judges critiques of like they want me to lean into being my full vulnerable yes. authentic self and her brain just work I feel like similar to her like I feel like yeah. my brain works in a weird way where I'm just like I'm gonna do this weird thing and commit to it and commit to it and I just I don't know it'll be sad to see like if Safira doesn't win because She's that like mother goose or like just, I don't know, motherly person. Yeah. She's been mm. like, she to me should be Miss Congeniality. Um, See, that's the gap. M- making the dress and doing all these She other should things. be Miss Congeniality, but she's not gonna because no one in the in final the ever three. gets yeah. voted. No, yeah. so, you can't. But I. Yeah. But I, I could see maybe Safira winning, but I'm. I could see Safira and Nymphia at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, playing to them. me is already like I. She's I the Thiefy O'Hara of the season. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, R.I.P. God. Yeah. Doing yeah. Doing cosplay after this and then quitting <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. showing up to the premiere of your season not in drag. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. She's it, like, and she's definitely the Fifi of season uh, four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Like you knew she was third out of three. Yeah. Yeah. That's plain Jane. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think it's going to go to Nymphia. All righty. Now we are going to look at some of our top looks of the season. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, honestly, let's get it out of the way, girls. Oh. Nymphia. I think girl. we all picked this one. Oh, yes. Nymphia. Yeah. This, this was Nymphia uh, in the ball. Men, yeah, the menswear like yes. design challenge. She literally made this all out of menswear. And it would be one thing. Even if you it's took art. every men's tie off this, it's fashion. It's is art. it fashion? Yeah. yeah. But is it fashion? <laughs> but is it fashion? Um, it oh. is fashion. But then to not only put ties on it, but to wire them mm-hmm. so that they were going off the body. The when your wind, name is Nymphia Wins. Wins. Yeah. It was on but then stunning. Even the yellow boot, like it just yes, it's she, the perfect <gasps> amount of the yellow. color. Like you're it, not losing your brand identity in this look because I still know this is Nymphia Wind. Yes, perfect pop of color. Like I could see this on like a Mesa Margiela runway. Oh, absolutely, Mechella. Who said it yeah. to her? It was actually a shockingly good critique from one of the judges. Said they were like, "You have an incredible eye for color." And putting colors mm-hmm. together that Carson most people would fear. Yeah. Carson, yeah. yes. Um, you the way that, it ruffles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That most people would fear. Yeah. yeah. But you make it work. And like, menswear is so ugly. Like, girl, how many times do we say we're How like, many times have we ranted about it? Yeah. Like, brown pants. Oh. Brown, like, yes. But this is stu- – I wouldn't even know that she was given menswear. I know. Wear. Absolutely. And imagine transforming this look into actual menswear of like a yellow shoe with this color, this and that leather. I would wear that. Yeah. In five seconds. I would wear it. Tell me about it. Yes. Like I would wear, if this (gasps) was a full fledged look with a yellow shoe, like a yellow, like Chelsea boot, I would wear it in two seconds. And I almost even wonder too, like, look at this tie on her on uh, the, chest. The, yeah. It's two ties tied together. It is literally, yeah, and what she did was, she, it looks like she overlapped them and sewed half yep. and half so that it, like, turned and you got, like, that's attention to detail. Oh, yeah. That is the people that, that's what I'm saying. I want to see her performance Just, at the finale because I yeah. cannot imagine what her brain is going to construct. Unbelievable. It's yeah. unbelievable. It's, and the fact that they've had now time, because even look at her makeup here. Oh. It looks elevated. Girl. Her look makeup is that. elevated. Stunning. I mean, she is stunning. And I can't wait to see because now when we get to the finale, they always look a little more polished. Oh, yeah. Totally. Because you've had, had time. time. Bigger yeah. lips. Yeah. yeah. Pumped, <laughs> yeah. All-star lips what are you and teeth. Pumped? Yeah, they yeah. come in with Steve Harvey veneers <laughs> and then pump <laughs> lips like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah, in a jiffy pop reveal yeah. coat. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. that won't be a reveal um, aquaria. That's okay. Nymphy across the board. My favorite looks. The whole, uh, you like, know what? She was the only one all season through and yes. through that I was excited. Her Can I Q. take it back? I want Nymphia to win this season. <laughs> we could just base. I do. Like, I'm I love telling Safira. you, girl. I do. I love <gasps> Safira. I love her, love her, love her. But honestly, Nymphia, I can't. Girl, look at this. Next Incredible. up is Nymphia's talent show. First of all, Stunning. the outfit, which I'm sure this is like culturally yes. accurate to because it quite literally was a Taiwanese, I think it was like a Taiwanese, Taiwanese dance. Yeah. dance. It was an so, yeah. authentic Taiwanese dance. Um, oh, the stunning. Make up 
are you kidding yeah, it's me? It's beautiful. Look at the hair. Masterclass. Look at the hair. Gelled mama. Yeah. And look at the headpiece and the everything, everything is to a T. Oh my Vogue. gosh. You can't it's, tell me this isn't Vogue. Art. And I we are sorry that we pulled from the Instagrams, but uh they don't like they only release the runway looks in like video format and all the photos are like not are fuzzy and you can't even tell anything. And if you're not a drag race fan, you don't watch, we'd rather give you the queens that they're like what they they're release. Apex, yeah. Um, I mean, it, yeah, it's unbelievable. Which we neglected to say this. I have no makeup skills. <laughs> um, I just am a big fan and everything they do is amazing. <laughs> and don't cancel any of us. We love <laughs> them all and we're so excited. Oh my god. Well, on the subject of makeup, let's say it the best makeup of the season, Morphine. Morphine, Morphine love Dion. Yeah. Girl, my god. This Talk about, she's running the Sephora. She's running the Mac <laughs> counter. Like she's the Navy. Like the Navy. <gasps> Incredible. Mama. Girl, you're stunning. Joking. This is off yeah, her stunning. Instagram. You know that. Like yeah. you can still, you I can, can see, see the texture, texture on yeah. the skin. I can see, this is not look, edited. Yeah, because look at the glitter flecks yeah. all Girl, over the face. Yeah. She didn't her, edit those out. Mama, stunning. Her "See You Next Wednesday" look was one of my favorites. That one and the when they oh, did, that's one of my looks. Casey, in here. what do you do? And it's coming. You already oh, know. Sorry. Oh, oh, on that note, let's go to stunning. it. Tisha Adams, and can, I want to talk about from. Nips to navel, yeah. white body paint yes. mama. She did the ears, the back yes. of the neck. She probably painted her hair in half. <laughs> yeah. Girl, I'm telling you. My yeah. God, I mean, this. Her tongue. When yeah. I, I get mean, body this, paint, I don't want a face unless it's intentional, like a porcelain, whatever yes. the case is. But if you're doing this, if oh, you're changing stunning. your skin color, I don't want the neck and head. I want it on the back of the neck. I want it on the back. I want it on the and the crack. I want and it look everywhere. At her with the fit yes. girl. Everything. This is this is my Morticia Adams now yes. going yes. forward. Yes. yes. This if yes. she's not cast in yes. Wednesday season yes. two, I don't f- want it. Yes. Yeah. Mommy is now me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I married your dad. Girl, I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> like this is so Sunny. she just killed it. And even though this is more of a, a snapshot from the show. Yes. I mean, you've got the to be kidding me. Detail. You've got to be kidding me. <gasps> she is just so stunning. deformative. And look at it. It's I would believe that's her skin tone. Yes. And I loved it because no one else really thought to do this. No. And especially for See You Next Wednesday, knowing it's a Wednesday, okay, all black, and we're going to do pale yeah. skin, and we're going to do this, like, Let me show more goth. depth than te- like that I can oh, do. Incredible. Wasn't she in the bottom for this? No, she was safe. Who was in the bottom? It was. Maya. Oh, this was Maya and Plasma. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. was, this well, was. Plasma <laughs> was a jail look, Girl, mama. this, but this was uh, bloody, uh, and this was also the, the dress bloody, Safira yeah. made yeah. for Maya. The horrible look from Plasma, but then this was the Bloody Mary TikTok dance version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, she, absolutely stunning. All right. Oh my god! I mean, it's, it's art. It's guys, literally art. Like, yeah. And this what always makes me laugh of like, let's ban drag queens because this is drag. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is, is drag. Like, and Nymphia again to come in with that creativity and <gasps> also come in with the education and the culture behind girl, it. I just it's stun- like, stunning. This is fully like Vogue. this is Pat McGrath makeup to me. Girl, look at this. This is look at I mean I can't. It's a work of art. She exquisite. It, there. Oh my God! I take it back. Nymphia is my winner. <laughs> That's why it was really yeah. when I was like, especially Nymphia picking these looks. Winner. Nymphia was the only one that served on the runway, and it was original looks. Where other people, as you'll see, their best looks were a share dress. Like, and that's not, okay, so good for you. You can pay someone to recreate a share dress, but can you do this? Like, yeah, But you're coming out like a mandatory meeting with a blue egg face cracked that's in half. That's what I and mean. Like, Cause she, because Nymphia's mind, as we saw in the season, she's a little kooky and she's a little out yes. there. But that's where she's like... She's like a Bianca. I'm not worried about it because I know I'm going to turn it out and just yeah, watch. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Stunning. It, on, and you, the makeup in this, I, that, it, this photo, every, I want this like framed. Yeah. We that is li- literally, yeah. that is like a, a Vogue. 100%. It, it's unbelievable. With that blur, uh, whoever shot this. They're cl- they're so clever. Yeah. Amazing. <sighs> All right. Let's jump to some of the other ones. Okay. We talked about it. I mean, it's quite literally a share recreation. But you know what? Whoever recreated, kudos for recreating. Kudos for spilling. <laughs> because it, it, this was sh- unbelievable. Yeah, yeah she does. I mean, I will say she, these larger-than-life <sighs> looks that she did bring, she knows her body. Yes. Yep. She knows n- that it's not going to swallow her. So if anybody else swallow did me, these... Swallow me. <laughs> drop down the side of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that's where <sighs> I'll give Safira and Plain Jane credit is even where in the fashion... Cat realm, 
yes, they they might not have a Nymphia-esque mind, but they know their body. Yeah. They know their shape. They know their proportions. They're, yeah. they, so that's where I think their fashion also comes yeah. from. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, yeah. Totally. No, her looks were... Again, larger than life, beautiful. Oh. Except for she, when she, I think she wore that breastplate that was too small for her. <gasps> Girl, what was and that? And it looked like little mosquito bites on her, <laughs> they basically. They were up here. Was and I was weird. like, Mama, what are those little itty bitty so... titty committee mosquito bites you got going? <laughs> yeah. It was weird. Like, girl, we need a breastplate that fits. But yes. then she, like, My but, first like then she remedies the issue fast. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah, she had a couple of slip-ups. How did she just, like, the- find... She, did she borrow someone else's breastplate? She maybe, had to have. Maybe. maybe. I don't she remember. She didn't just no. acquire a new breastplate halfway through she the season. learned how to make latex <laughs> in her she home. She's no. melting, yeah, yeah, wax. She has like, molds, and she's <laughs> staying up with, like, little glasses <laughs> and just, like, molding Like her, the old guy redoing Woody. Like, yeah. fully. Yeah. She breaks out the case Painting little the little nipple compressor. on with a brush. Yeah, like, she, like... Yeah. It's, like, ASMR of her doing it. Yeah. The way that Painting the nipples with Benetton. Yeah. That scene was so aesthetically pleasing when he's like wiping his eye with a Q-tip. And he's like squeaking. Yes, that's what she was doing. Like with the... Sewing the arm. Just like... Yeah, yeah. totally. Sewing her titties back. Oh my God. Uh, Okay, so this was one of my favorites. This was one of my favorites. Oh, oh, okay. So another... I I love it. I love... So I love this because it's so like on brand for her. Yes. And I love that she ran with it. Like it was just, so the, this was, I can this buy was myself flowers. flowers. So to take this idea of this iconic look and plasma <laughs> had that old, like, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. like I just, Beautiful. it reminds me of like beauty and the beast, but oh like, this is if like bell was like going out and bell was in my fair lady. Yeah. Yes. yes. My Absolutely. fair lady Bridgerton. Like this is, yeah. I could Exclusive. see it. Plasma should be <gasps> cast just as much as, Leah Jinx Michelle. was cast in like Doctor Who. She should be in the next season of Bridgerton with this look. Like, I, I completely I, agree. To me, yeah. exquisite is a similar vibe to season five Jinx Monsoon. And I would That's love to see her I fully said. fledged. Get, I said like, that in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. When I oh, almost you two picked are her. so similar. I know. Yeah. I said that in the beginning yeah. when I almost picked Plasma in my fantasy league, but I said it was like she's not going to win because yeah. they don't win the show anymore. And it's incredible that she, I mean, the two wins she had, she's going to do amazing oh, things. I don't She yeah. lives in New York City and I want to get her on the pod so bad. Yeah. I want to DM her. Um, yeah. But uh, she, and uh, again, Exquisite. being a theater queen myself, I mean, this is Hello Dolly. This was like my uh, Hello Dolly. She referenced, uh, Funny Girl, like, but what I love about it from knowing even the costumes in My Fair Lady and Funny Girl and Hello Dolly is uh, the originality of this. And it didn't, yes, you're right, the yellow, almost like bell, dried, yeah. like, and the to, to do the flowers with this look is so genius because to use the flowers to build up those shoulder pads and yeah. where that would normally be fabric. And with a floral print gown already mm-hmm. absolutely it's it not would be too busy. overdone yes yes You're, it's too many flowers it's costume <laughs> it looks yeah. costumey to me yeah let's go to miss q so i love this look this is one of my favorites and shout out to q she <gasps> made every single look she had okay she needs credit for she deserves yes. her looks this season were exquisite and i think in any other season she probably mm-hmm. maybe would have made it to the finale i don't know maybe practice those lip syncs that Got a, she's I will a, say, a little bit yes. of Lane Bennis dancing. Because but. the other queens who reminded me of Q, who let's say the ones that like make all their own shit, like um, who comes to mind, Raja. Mm-hmm. Makes, Raja O'Hara. Raja O'Hara. Raja O'Hara shined in dancing. And what, where Q, I was like, oh, we can. <laughs> Looks. <Right. laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. Like yeah. it was, that's really what I feel but like. Bit I just love this look. And. The fact that, you know, when she came out in the episode and told her whole story. We're and now like, with this dress and the red. And to yeah. do yes. the red like ribbon Jeremy like Ravis. that is just such a... To, to me, explain for people who don't know, like uh, this is the AIDS... Uh, the, Keith Herring. The Keith Herring um, design. And then the red is like for the red ribbon of mm-hmm. built in. But what I love is when people try to do harkens to things like this, or even like, let's say the rainbow flag, whatever, it tends to be a little... Party tacky. city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It tends to be tacky. Like, yeah. and this is so elevated. And it's stunning. It's yeah. And in the episode when she, you know, shared her story about her struggle being HIV positive. Yeah. Yes. Like that was absolutely beautiful. But I love it because it in classic drag, I love a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And to for everything that's happening in the world and what's going on, for her to use this as a platform and an opportunity. Cause as I watched it, I was like, oh, I really like this. But then when she explained the whole when I realized, because in the back, you can't tell in this one photo, the whole red ribbon behind her, I'm like, what this is. 
you're Absolutely. in a different stratosphere. And I just think to use your platform to do good like this is yeah. what, yeah, this, this is how really you great. eventually change people's minds. Yeah. But absolutely stunning and just beautiful. All right. Um, oh, girl. That plain is Plain Jane share. When this turned the corner, I, I screamed. Yeah, I did too. Because again, kudos mama. Kudos for spilling for whoever <laughs> made this dress. Because it is so well done. And you know how hard... This is one of the most beautiful Bob Mackie gowns and to do it so well, but I almost love that it was a little different. Like there was a little bit, an element of difference to this one that I just found even the hair with this, the way she did her makeup. It was just on the runway with the white and the silver and the diamonds just catching the light. It was unbelievable to look at. I mean, this is probably one of my, yeah, those ostrich feathers are to die for. I mean, and how this moved on the runway, too, <gasps> with that. And with the hair, the fact that three other people borrowed this hair <laughs> and it competed more than <laughs> Serena Cha-Cha, <laughs> I lost my mind. And that it's just a black straight wig. Yeah. But nobody brought a black straight wig. But the fact that, like, sh- it just proves to me that she, I Plain know. Jane, is just one of those people that can, not everybody, I feel like, could have pulled this off. No. If, 100%. If, Q wore this for the share runway, I wouldn't have been like as absolutely, loved, you know. Yeah. Well, There's that's about, about understanding your proportions because the body, mama, the, the body, body, nobody was, pads, yes. she pads, she pads so really well. well, it's yeah. insane, gorgeous. Okay, how okay, Zafira's, uh, how'd you pack, this? How'd you pack this? this? I know, how, yeah. no, for real, because what I want to know, to deal with like FedEx, wouldn't that be I, the gag? <laughs> no, I want another after show. What you packing? How you packing? <laughs> how'd you pack? How, how you packing? Yeah, well, one way in, one way out, girl. <laughs> yeah, um. I, I know it really, it just it, exquisite. This blew my mind because again, blew. we're like plasma. I want this look, Bridgerton. Yes. Uh-huh. Next season. Let's do it. Make up. her oh. the queen. No, yes. like yeah. I I couldn't when she walked out, the fact that it's royal Opulence. blue and then it's giving royalty. Yeah. I yes. was like, you but and then nobody else to me could wear a no. dress with these proportions, with this Marge yes. Simpson hair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I and it's rhinestoned. Yes. And, yeah. Perfectly. And the dress is so busy, but it's so perfect. Uh, and then it just... It, it's stunning. Oh, it's, because if you look at it, take away like the side pieces. If she was just wearing that up and down, that's like... It looks like these side pieces were like... Could be like Velcroed to her. Girl. Yeah. Like it's look just the, the way... Detail because it that. snatches her body all the way down and then it gives her that yeah. elongated with I like know. that different texture. Covering up the slew foot. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. And then with the yellow nails, nails. mama. I just... I know. Oh. It looks like she's in the live action remake of uh, Beauty and the Beast. Totally. Like, yes. Right? Like when yeah. they turn back into people. Like that's yes. what it looks this like. Is, I yeah. just absolutely... This is one of my favorite looks from Safira this season. She yeah. just really... When she came out in this, I lost my breath. Unbelievable. Incredible. Okay, let's talk about it. Okay. The makeover challenge, mama. So... I want to defend this really quick because you shit on it about 20 minutes ago. 100%. I agree with you. I okay. think Nymphia should have won. Look at this. Why she, I love yeah. the plain Jane one is because this is now the photo that we have. This is redone. <sighs> yes. The photo that they did together, horrible. The makeup now is better. Why I love it. I love the opposites of like the black and the blonde and then it's in different places. I like that it's the similar That's outfit. That's the only opposite. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm saying yeah, like the yeah, opposite yeah. hair colors. Like this to me, yes. they feel like sisters. At this stage in the game, season 16, this has been going on for so long. I want what a, what Nymphia did. Like at the bare minimum, don't wear the exact same outfit. Yeah. Wait, I have a question. It should have been at least opposite color. Like, give- That's what I mean. Because I know, like, I know for a fact, like, when they're given, um, and this is, like, probably, like, kind of kills the magic a little bit, but, like, you know when you're doing a makeover challenge, they let you know yes. size, everything, measurement, so you bring the outfits. I understand that this is identical. What happened with Safira then? Where Safira panicked and had to borrow outfits from Plain Jane. Like, was she not? Like, that's well, where she I'm ended like, up in the bottom. Because the well, outfit. But that's right. Because her yeah. blue outfit, like, she couldn't dance. In, but, like, do you not think, like. I don't think she thought she was going to have to dance as much as she Ma- had yeah. to. Ma- yeah. Ma- Which, on, honestly, season- we said it during the show. And then I think Trixie and, and whoever was on the pit stop said the same thing. I would have rathered wore what I was going to wear and have done. 
I, especially that your partner, this wasn't a season where you were making over a group full of super fan teachers, like who can't walk in heels. Your partners were RuPaul's Drag Race Live dancers. Yeah. I would have wore that dress that and I could not look in do. and yeah. said, we are standing still and you better make me Vogue the house down. Yeah. It is all arms and head. Like, because- Because if they were both doing it in unison, it, it would have been amazing. Sense. Yeah. Yes. It would have made sense. Also, very common for RuPaul's Drag Race, we make everyone dance in the makeover challenge and the Always. way they dance doesn't factor into the decision at all. So you, like, the how they performed did not factor into who no, went home. It was, and who, it was yeah. all about the it look was all and about the transformation. The look. Yeah. So you sacrificed your look for a five-second dance that had no bearing, no bearing on the challenge. No. Yeah. This, to me, was one of my favorite looks. Oh. The, the DragCon 1980s. Yes. Like, again, just the, <laughs> like, who thinks like this I know. to do, I'm gonna do... A boobs, hot plate, but do them <laughs> as a hot plate penny. Yeah. yeah, do them in that uh, Madonna esque. But then they're like, they're and so the colors. Who thinks to do that orange and purple yes. in that way with the white, I, the thickness of the white lines? I just you know think what this incredible. is almost reminding me of. Oh my god, what's that movie? Is it Fifth Element? Oh, I don't know. Fifth Harmony? No, no, no. It's like, I think it's called Fifth Element. Yeah. And this is like that vibe oh, of that. There are so many 80s references in this that that's what I mean. Anything Nymphia yeah. makes is such a meal for the eyes where it's like, first of all, we have the Madonna bra, but then there's also like David Bowie in here. Yes. And all very of these. That. It's very, there's, it's With the such hair a and blender yeah. of I all like, of these in things. In the best way yeah. possible, I almost don't know where to look. Like oh. I look at it and I'm like, what's my favorite part? Morphine. So I love this look. This yeah. was from the runway that was like the color themes yes. and what I love about this was this felt very different for her yes and I feel like it did all the right things with her body and she just her the juxtaposition of the white pop in the eyes with the purple just like makeup yes n stunning and even with the feathers like this is very similar to the Cher Bob Mackie dress the yes. way it was yeah. moving with the ostrich feathers dripping on the sleeves and the yeah. legs with the you know the rhinestones and the yeah. hat but I loved the hat with this and then this what is uh plain Jane's wick <laughs> yes and yeah. so yes. I just for that episode to do like colors which could be such a simple like thing I don't know there's something so rich like when I think of morphine now like I think of her in this look and yes. I think of her as like a little bit slutty but a little bit rich like just overall mm -hmm. woman and yeah. I loved it so that's why it was a favorite for me all right and then okay mama Q made this she made it. in one day and my only problem with this was I wanted the body white <laughs> yeah. If morphine can do it, so can you. Because if you're gonna paint your face white, the yes. rest of your skin, then you need to cover it up. Yes. Yeah. Or paint it white. Agreed. And what I think, I mean, you could stare at so many different things here, but like this in theory should be ugly. It's so busy and it's exactly. But again, it's like similar to Nymphia. I give Q really has an eye oh. for design. Like you look at it and it's just it's exquisite. It's art. Yes. And then last but not least, was this what she wore? For the um the Lala Perusa. Lala Perusa. So this was uh again literally didn't even need to get in drag. <laughs> she wasn't performing. I mean, not only is this exquisite, mama, the makeup. Yeah. Like how do you that's art you that, see this? This to me is like amped up from the first episode when she did the talent show. This is like, how do I elevate that I look? Know. I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And she was literally sitting there, like, and I can't even tell you the way this read on TV. It like I thought she had like a, a, mask. a mask on. That's how I'd well like it was it on, done. Yeah. yeah, and d even from a makeup point of view, Kevin, tell me, have you ever even seen to think to do this makeup the way it was? The contour on the nose, like split down the middle <gasps> with the bare skin. I the, I was looking at that since you pulled up the close up, and I'm like, I would never even thought think to, yeah, to do that. It's literal contour, but you're not contouring the nose. You're just I know. doing bare skin, but and to do the white only. That's, on can you believe that? I know, because as soon as you pulled it up, I was like, wow, that is, that's, that because look how it goes right into the eye and hugs all yes. of this. It's a reverse contour with flesh, flesh? Like, I've never even seen this. Yeah. This is so it, it's a, unreal. It, yeah, just, all, she served art all season. That's what I'm saying. I really do hope it's Nymphia, because I do too. as you see from these Deserved. looks, man, it's just, it's crazy. And well, every deserved. week, Nymphia was the one I was like, oh, yes, excited. I want to see what she's going to yes, do. Yes, totally. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, that's it for a brand new episode. Um, we were saying now since uh, the finale is in two days that uh, maybe cut to 
right now inserting our reactions for live live for the win oh. so you guys can see us see who won because yeah. we obviously it's before the finale so we'll record it yeah yeah absolutely we'll drop it in there the winner oh god i want both of them america's next drag superstar is I really thought it was going to be Safira. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. It's wind season. Wow. I love that RuPaul didn't get up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for your video episode one day early. Make sure to subscribe on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review on Spotify if you can't. No, yes, yeah, Spotify, because we're at like 950 reviews. <gasps> we're so close to 1,000. 1K? So, yes. Thank you to my lovely Casey for being on the show. <laughs> The lovely Casey. <laughs> Thank you to the lovely Casey. Thank you to my lovely husband. Oh, for it's me. so nice that you show up. You are my wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my hungry boy. Yeah. How was this? Your second appearance? I loved it. I, I It was nice to be part of the magic. Um, I, we couldn't not have you on a Drag Race episode. I love Drag Race so much. And again, yeah. I can't do makeup as evident of things but you can be a fan of things and yeah you know yeah. so thanks for having me of i love it um of course. thank you for coming. keep the cyber bullying to a minimum absolutely yes <laughs> and remember anything we said in this episode is just our opinion so yes. if it aggravated you calm down they're all yeah. amazing yeah. Yeah. they're all great they're all gonna do amazing things yeah wherever you are we hope you are happy safe and healthy and remember you are beautiful bye mm -hmm. bye, bye.